This is James Holder for the Cast and Helder Show. I'm here in Dublin. With me, I've got the elusive, the enigma, the one and only Adam Booth. How are you, Adam? Good. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very well. May I say, you're looking very, very debonair today, very calm and cool. I mean, calm in green. My psychiatrist said it's good for me. Good colour for you, green. Pastel colours are calm, apparently. Indeed, indeed. Obviously, the favourite colour of, of your man, Andy Lee, as well. Fighting Irish Andy Lee. Today. Indeed. I've got, to, I've got to get used to the environment, you know? How is everything going with Andy Lee in his camp? Good. Yeah. He's getting ready now to start training properly. Ten weeks training. Yeah. Um, everything signed and confirmed as of yet? Is there just, a final? There's, there's just that good little I's to dot and T's to cross. But we're, we're planning on doing that in the next couple of days. And then we'll get cracking. How big of a fight is this for Ireland? At Billy Joe Saunders taking on Irish Andy Lee. Well, I think an Irish world champion is as big as it gets for Irish boxing anyway. Um, and for Billy Joe Saunders, it's, it's the biggest fight of his career because it's a world title challenge. So for, for both of them, it's, as, it's probably as big as it gets. Mm. Two Southpaws fighting stylistically. Uh, in the past, there was obviously a bad name toward that. Do you think that's an unfair thing to kind of think? No, you can have um, bad fights between two Southpaws, but, then, but that's normally when the Southpaws are leaning back or wanting to be counter punchers. And um, but both Andy and Billy Joe can take the lead. And and I and I see this as being one of the competitive Southport matchups rather than one of the lean back negative ones. So I think I think and because of that and because of because of Billy Joe's speed and boxing and because of Andy's boxing and power, I think it's it's gonna be an entertaining scrap for every second that it lasts. You mentioned Billy Joe's speed. Do you think that's his main strength and his main attribute? Uh, it's certainly, I mean, it's certainly something that you have to deal with because when anyone has that a speed advantage, you've got to find a way of dealing with it. But Andy's dealt with that plenty of times in the past. And if you look at the, uh, the Matt Korobov fight, he was dealing with someone that had, didn't just have very fast hands, but very quick feet as well. Um, so th there's no element in this fight that Andy hasn't seen before and hasn't dealt with, but it, that you can't you can't just make the assumption that because you've done it before you're going to do it again. Billy Joe is coming as an unbeaten challenger, number one, and with all the belief in the world, he believes that Andy's past his sell by date, and he believes he's going to come and pick up the title. But I know for a fact that Andy's going to box, fight, and punch tooth and nail with anyone to keep hold of that belt. And, and I think with those two elements involved, you've got an incredible fight. I can't think of a point in history where two men from a travelling background have competed for a world title. Now, if I'm wrong and you know the stat, text me and I'll be well, I can I'm tell wrong. you one stat. Andy is the first ever boxer of traveller descent to win a world championship. Is that right, Pete? <laughs> and straight away, six months later, you've got two travellers fighting for that same world title. So you haven't just got one unique scenario, you've got two. And, and that, on top of it being where it is and the type of fight that it is, just, this is a, it's a special event. When Andy Lee beat Matt May Korobov, I brought this exact fact up in the press conference and some of the Americans were umming and ah and looking at me like I was not getting my facts right, but I was actually right, wasn't I? Yeah. Does it pain you to admit that? <laughs> I think I told you the answer anyway. <laughs> you may have done that. You may have done that. I mean, what will you do for sparring then? Can you give me, if I could say to you, you could pick any sparring partner, who do you think would ideally would be suited for this camp? I wouldn't ask that question. I'd, I'd never, never say who I'm going to be working with. No, but uh, maybe even if you couldn't get them, just who do you think would be a good Marvin Agler. <laughs> Bernal Whitaker. Uh, Michael Nunn. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, we've got Ryan Burnett in action in Dublin. Um, fantastic fighter, Ryan Burnett. Probably four defeats in, I think, 96 amateur fights. How do you think he's now made that transition into the pro ranks? Um, well, he, he, had, he had four pro fights when he, when he came to me last August. Mm -hmm. And then since then, he's had five. The, Ryan is freakishly quick, very, very strong, and very clever for, and cunning for, for such a young fighter. Um, and it's just about encouraging little elements in him as a person and in, his, and his, in a fighter to keep his progression going along. But I've got, I, I've got so much, so much conviction in, in what he can achieve. That I'm really excited about the journey and, and, and it's not going to be long now before he's a 12 round championship player. Would you think we could see him maybe 12 to 18 months time headlining these cards in Dublin and kind of pushing to be at the top tier of the fight? Well, Ryan's from Belfast 
So I'd like to see him maybe headlining in Belfast. And, and if that is going to happen, I would be extremely disappointed if that wasn't well within a year. Jamie Collins, obviously from Belfast, he's headlining in Dublin on this card, so at disappointing that. Flyweight. Yeah. Different weight division. Okay. A little bit about Richard Towers. When can we anticipate seeing him in action? And what do you think you've implemented and changed from where he was with the Ingalls to where he is now? Yeah, I don't want to talk about what we're working on. Uh, he's just about to go into a period of heavy sparring now where we start to test him on, on the things that we've been working on. And once he's done that, he'll be fighting. And once he starts fighting, he'll be bouncing from one to the next. And, and we'll see exactly what he can do because he's a big, powerful, dangerous man that needs to be, to be that in the ring. So, Time will tell. What levels and what aspirations do you think Richard Towers can reach in your honest um, opinion? Any 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 guy that big with those type of attributes who's 15 and 1 as a pro is only ever two or three good wins away from being right in the mix. It's the heavyweight division. The heavyweight division is, is unique. Unique in its popularity and unique in its, its sort of lack of depth of quality. Um, so there are a lot of openings, although the, the division is very competitive now take Vladimir out of the equation I don't see anyone being standout you know Deontay Wilde has been incredible at what he does but there are vulnerabilities that people might think they can capitalize on it's, and it's like that for every every uh, heavyweight now that's kind of sitting underneath the proficient level of Vladimir Klitschko and Vladimir doesn't have that long left you know was he 39 now mm -hmm. coming up to 40 whatever it is and and so history says that his time is going to be up pretty soon, so it's going to be, the division, division is going to be wide open for a lot of interesting fights. What chances do you give Tyson Fury of beating the Lion Air champion, which is Vladimir Klitschko? Heavyweight boxing, everyone has a chance. Um, you've got to make Vladimir the favourite because he's the proven entity at that level. Um, and he can punch, and, and if you look at the Kubrat Pulev fight last year, mm -hmm. uh, Pulev you know, he went down five times, but he was trying to give it to Vlad, and he hurt Vlad, I think, with a jab very early in the fight as well. And Vlad proved that he, even even after all these years and, and being sort of safety first, that when push comes to shove, he'll bite down on that gum shield and trade with someone and look for powerful shots because he knows that when your back's against the wall, that's the only way of getting out of it sometimes. And he proved with Pulev that he still has that in him. Um, and, and, and because of that, because you could, you could still see that in him last year, you've got to make Vlad the favourite. But any man that's as big as Tyson Fury, who can box like Tyson, who's got that, you know, that, that, that crazy belief in himself, then you've got to give him a chance. When you select a fighter to work with, what, what attributes do you look for in a person? I don't know. I, was, I, I, I honestly don't know. It must be one core thing that, no, that makes you drawn to an individual. It's not. I either, I, I either want to do it or I don't. That simple. Okay. It's bizarre. Can we anticipate seeing any new further announcements with regards to fighters joining the camp in the next six Not to eight now. months? Maybe Pete McDonald, but that's about it. But he signed with MGM, so no. Didn't you work with McDonald once before? Didn't many we? moons back. Huh? Many and, he, moons. And, he, and he should have beaten the WA number one. WA number one, yeah, but he hurt his shoulder. Yeah, he's went on actually fought ski. He's getting on now. Zamora. Zamora. years ago. <laughs> Same age as you, when it's for you. <laughs> Alright, well listen, I can't, I can't thank Adam Booth enough. Yesterday I asked him for an interview, he said yes. He absolutely brutalised me, intellectually bullied me yesterday, nearly made me cry. Today I think, I know he felt me. bad. Well, just me, was it? I know he felt bad, so today he's met up with me, made the effort to come and do something, so I do appreciate that. Respect is restored. Thank you very much, Adam Booth. God bless.